It's like fighting something made at a Pantera concert. Howdy y'all, this is Master Sergeant Porkins here, and welcome back to another play of West of Loathing, where we last left off, we took out the Fricker Gang and got the uh, sheriff back his cell door, and also we had uh, gone to the hostler and he told us uh, where to find his missing three horses. Um, so now I think we're going to go after and at least grab whatever we can, not to mention there's a bunch of other little things we can do, so let's go give this thing some help. Okay, so the new places we can go to are Boring Springs Boneyard, Orhole Mine, and Thousand Snakes Gulch. Alright, I think we'll go to the Orhole Mine. I like going to the Orhole. Ooh, what do we got here? What is this? This is where Bill said to look. Hey, he wasn't kidding. Not only would uh, it have been a funny thing to kid about, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we found the shovel. Uh, Bill is the cactus. And uh, we had helped him out, and I guess we got a shovel. Nice. So what does this shovel do? Provides the option to dig in certain places. Ah. There's still some meat ore in this cart. They, they mine meat. All right, that is awesome. Ooh, it's, it's a dirty mug. I still love the way he walks. That that is just so cool. He's just all through the he's just swimming through it. Ooh, it's dark and dirty in here. This mechanism is labeled cargo elevator control. A poster on the wall behind it reads: Level one blasting cap storage. Level two plungers, both types. Level three tools. Where do you want to send the cargo elevator? Uh, let's leave it alone for right now because I have no clue. Instructions for the cargo elevator. This mine cart is still full. Dig to it. Found an unrefined meat nugget. <laughs> That's pretty cool. This looks dangerous. At least there's no plunger hooked up to it. Ah. So I guess let's go to level one. We gotta get the blasting cap, that'd be a good thing. Now these crates are all labeled blasting caps. The period is part of the label. That's why it's inside the quotes like that. Grab one. Dang it, looks like you're gonna need a crowbar to pry one of these uh, crates open. Damn it, all right. Let's try level two. Plungers. The sign lied, though. There's only the one kind. Alright, we got a detonation plunger. And tools. It's a toolbox, but it's locked. Damn it. Alright. Let's see now. Plunger. We're gonna have to hook the plunger up. Sometimes the only solution to a clogged pipe is to blow up the entire building. I I agree with that. That that is that is something I definitely agree with. All right, I think I know what I need to do. Let's go get the uh, let's go get that uh, that one thing back in the the town of Boring Springs. Every day I'm cartwheeling. Oh, I, cart. Oh wait, I can shovel this up. It's nasty work, but someone's got to do it. Hell yeah, level up. The fact that I could shovel poop is absolutely awesome. Somebody buried a mug here. Really? Okay. Wait, hold on. What has he got? He's always got something interesting. Hmm. Nothing. Apparently he doesn't always have something. Let's go drop off these uh, mugs back at the bar. Well, it looks like uh, that place is going to be a bust. We're going to have to head off to one of the other places. See what we can find. Wait a moment. Our, what? Our, fa uh, our founder, Zephaniah Boring, 1806-1885. He was actually a really interesting guy. <laughs> Headstones are always some of the greatest things to do. Benjamin Crockett, 1320-1364. He showed up way too early. 
Beauregard, Skeleton Captain, 3rd Cavalry. Dig up grave. What? Fi what? A skeleton. You're not getting past it without a scuffle. Oh, Jesus. I gotta fight him. Um, what do I do? What do I do? Go punch him? I punched him. Yeah. Ow, you hit me back, that son of a bitch. This is like the first time I've really had to fight anybody. Yay, we won! You got an old cavalry saber. You got a gold tooth. And Moxie went up, holy crap. You put a stop to the Captain Skeleton's unnatural animation. So I got a cavalry saber, what does that do? Here comes the cavalry saber. <laughs> is it as good as my brass knuckles? Actually, it's better than my brass knuckles. Hell yeah. Let's put that in there. I have a sword. Now we can start cutting stuff. That sounds good. I am definitely going to have to fight him then. I'm ready. That was easy. The skeleton collapses into a pile of loose bones. Cool. <laughs> that guy just wouldn't stay put. That's a ghost horse. Timothy Cochran, 1855 to 1895. Devoted husband. Elizabeth Cochran, 1887 to 1895. Beloved daughter. Silas Cochran, a baby. Your pulse quickens as you get near the spooky horse. Transmitter horse approacher. As you approach the semi transperse horse so uh, cautiously so as to not startle her, you notice, uh, though quickly, you come to the realization that this is not a horse that startles easily. Hello, friend. Hi. I'm a friend, okay? Nay. That's a little strange. How did you do that with opening your mouth? You pat the horse's nose, which is very cold. If you were going to ride her, you would, uh, you would want an extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. Pat her nose again. Yep, still burko. Pat again. Keep pat. Let's do it. Pat a pat a pat a pat a pat a pat a pat. No. And feed her oats. All right, here you go, girl. Have some oats. You hold out a handful of oats for the horse, but she just sort of stares right through you. Brr. Please don't look at me like that. Snort. Try try the oats again. You hold out the oats again, but the horse continues to ignore. What's the matter? Are they not spooky enough? I'm not sure how to make oats spooky. I guess I could put some bone meal on them, but I don't have anything handy to grind up bones with. Grave dirt. Winnie, is that a yes? Okay, add some grave dirt to the oats. You sprinkle the oats with just a little bit of grave dirt and hold them out. The horse gazes expressionally at them and eats them. Nay. And with that, she glides away in the direction of town. Yeah, that's bizarre. That's a little weirder than the way I walk. Alright, so we figured out what was that Boring Springs boneyard. Now we gotta go to the Thousand Snakes Gulch. Listen, there's not a thousand snakes, it's just one. One of those rocks is really shiny. Grab it. I got a shiny rock. Out. Out. The snake looks sleepy, but not that sleepy. I'm gonna have to fight it. Alright. Tarms, gotta kill it! Ooh, ah, you have slain a snake. Before long, I'll call you Snake Murder in Haywood. Hell yeah. My glamour skill went up. That's good. Another snake? Well, I guess it's not called one snake gulch. Ow, did he call me a jerk? Oh, I got poisoned. Ooh, that snake is tough, and he's going to poison the hell out of me, too. Ooh, you made short work of that long snake. The snake looks really angry. If you're gonna, you're gonna need every trick in the book to beat this one. I'm good at tricks. Ow! No, don't hit me! Come on! Ah! 
Ah, that poison's really getting me. But that's okay, we can do it. Got it. Nice work. If the whole cowboy thing doesn't work out, you could always get a job as a snake exterminator. Ooh, I got gumption. There's a horse. Is that it? Dang it. Alright, so we, this horse has gotten snake crazy, or maybe it was some kind of other, uh, other kind of crazy before. Approach him. Hey there, boy. Hey, fella. I'm a friend, okay? <laughs> it's cool, right? Be cool. Don't freak on me. Winnie? <laughs> look him in the eyes. You calmly look the horse in the eyes. One of them is fixed in a glassy thousand yards there. The other one is revolving madly in its socket, like he's thinking of trying to escape in every direction simultaneously. He looks to be calming down a little, though. Now it's clear that you aren't actually made of spiders, though. Pat his nose. Now you carefully and gently pat the horse's nose. He twitches a bit. Okay, a lot. But he seems to recognize that you aren't going to eat his eyes or suck out his soul or whatever madness is bouncing around that skull of his. That's a good boy. <laughs> Feed him nose. Are you hungry, boy? I got a little treat for you. Snurf. What the hell was that? You feed the crazy horse some of the homie notes, and it gallops away with, uh, with a whinny. Or rather, a and hopefully it heads home and not just into the 12th dimension. <laughs> Jeez. All right. You don't have to walk all the way back over there. Hit him. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm going to do it anyways. I cartwheel around all this. I don't care. We're going back. Well, here, let's head over here real quick. Let's see what he's got. Oh, it's a crazy horse. Looks like my pale horse made it back safe after all. He gives me 300 meat. Thanks for your help. Time. Thanks for finding my crazy horse. He was eating loco weed again, wasn't he? Gave me more meat. Not that I noticed. You said something earlier about an injury. Yeah, I busted my knee while mucking out the showroom. Don't ask. It's embarrassing. I was going to get Doc Alice to have a look at it, but she gave up Docker. And why'd she do that? Nobody knows. She just shut herself in her office. Said she wouldn't talk to anyone except Nurse Whiskey. That an actual nurse or pretty sure she was just being sarcastic. I see. Well, you know what? I think I can go do this. I think I know how to do this. I think I got the uh, the, the stuff to do with. What did I get? Oh, I found a shiny rock. It's shiny and it's about the size of a rock. <laughs> get lost. Offer whiskey. This is the whiskey I found. Remember that. Whiskey delivery to you, Doc. What brand? Nurse whiskey. Your favorite, I'm led to believe. Didn't know she makes house calls. All right, hold on. You hear a rattle as she unlocks the door. Oh, she's got plenty of TNT. Hey, Doc, can I look at your book? It's not until you give her the whiskey that promised. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Doc Alice looks to be about in her 50s. Her hair is green, her face is lined, but her eyes are still sharp, uh, clear and sharp. If bloodshot, she holds out her hand. Whiskey, stat. Give it to her. You never turn down somebody asking for whiskey. She crack opens the whiskey and fills a small glass. She takes it out of her pocket, and then she puts the flask back in her pocket and starts chugging out of the bottle. Jeez, Doc, that don't seem healthy. Who's the doctor here, me or you? Okay, point taken. <laughs> nice, all right. Well, what do we got here? So, Hey, Doc, can I look at your book? Sure, if you want to. Not that they're going to do much good in this doom for second hellhole. You should try to be less cheerful, Doc. Check out the books. You survey the books on Alice's shelf. They're all medical textbooks, except for a few. Leaf through the legend of Curly's Meat. <laughs> the Life and Works of Fred Ferguson and the Goblinoid's Tongue, a primer. Oh. I can speak. You start flipping through the Goblin language book. It's confusing at first, but eventually gets so engrossed by the time you take a break from it. Several blurfs have passed. You also know that blurf is Goblin word for hour. You have learned Goblin speak. You know, maybe if I would have had this, if I didn't kill the one goblin downstairs, I may have been able to save him. Well, now I know. The book tells the story of a legendary treasure, a massive chest full of premium meat, uh, secreted in the hidden sense, not in the extruded sense, in the western desert by an old cow ham named Curly Butterfield. Huh. This book purports to be a Civil War surgeon's autobiography, but flipping through it, it mostly just finds a list of reasons and that drinking alcohol is bad. So it's actually a work of ludicrous speculative fiction. Huh. At least there are some useful appendices uh, in the back and some diagrams of appendices. <laughs> nice. 
I gained experience. Nice. That's a good thing. I like this. What is this? This Vandy doesn't look like uh, seen much use. Preen a little. You grab a pair of tweezers and pluck some of the more, uh, your more unsightly eyebrows. Yeah, I look pretty now. Stove is spotless. Either she's really compulsive about cleaning or she never cooks. Uh, wow, should this be further from the fireplace? Doc Alice to con uh, continues to pour whiskey down her neck, occasionally stopping to breathe. <laughs> um, is everything all right? That depends on how fast I can get this whiskey in my bloodstream compared to how fast my liver filters it out. And I can't talk and drink at the same time, so she <laughs> stares at you meaningfully. <laughs> so what's, uh, I mean, what's the matter, Doc? W what's the matter? The whole world's gone to hell in a horse cart, and you're asking what's the matter? Bandits, cow demons, dead men walking? Why don't you go ahead and pick one? I'll drink to that. Dead man walking? You haven't seen it? Corpses and skeletons staggering around uh, like puppets with half their strings cut, looking like they took a bite out of the living? Oh yeah, there was a skeleton in the cemetery. It's nice to see someone outside confirmation that's not losing my damn mind, but how's that even possible? It isn't possible. It goes against everything I know about medicine. Dead patients don't get back up. Patients? Oh, out. Doc Alice turns away grimacing. Every doctor loses one now and again. You never get used to it, but, well, it happens. But what doesn't happen is them coming back afterwards and looking for revenge. That must be pretty rough. Rough, buddy? I don't think you comprehend the situation. It's not just parents. It's neighbors, friends, husbands. Oh, um... <laughs> this is getting... Um, indeed. She turns away from you and focuses her attention back on a bottle. Hmm. That is interesting. Let's check her bed. Nothing, nothing. Anything else from her? Do you have any idea what's causing the resurrections? Well, I heard a rumor. Rumor, what is it? When you get an incomplete information from an unverified source. Er, anyways, I heard that it's a fella out west that's causing it. A necromancer, they call him. Suppose he's sending out magic out to the world somehow. Like magic the bean sl uh, slingers use? I never heard any bean slinger raising the dead, have you? Her scowls deepen. That'd be one hell of can of beans. Well, we gotta keep asking her. What's with the deal of all the TNT? Well, it's so I feel like I'm about to go. I can blow myself up into a bit so small there won't be nothing left to come back. That seems drastic. Drastic hell. I'm, no way I'm taking a risk of becoming one of those things. Fair enough, I suppose. I ask about the necromancer. Assuming he exists, what about him? Well, maybe someone ought to try to stop him. Doc Alice gives you a sharp look. You... Because I know you, and you ain't talking to me. Why not you? A gray-haired woman that knows about as much about fighting as a squirrel knows surgery? Did you hit your head on a bar still, son? You aren't that old. And if you uh, if you were going to pick a fight, uh, someone who'd go up against a necromancer would be someone who knows about death, but in a scientific way. A doctor, right? Doc Alice stares hard at you and takes a swig from her bottle. And it sounds to me like you got plenty of motivation to get the job done for your friends and, and everyone. He continues to look at you. You can see the gears start turning her head. Beats doing nothing anyways. Beats locking yourself in a house full of TNT and drinking yourself to death. You aren't even doing uh, any doctoring anymore. She winces and looks away, then shakes her head slowly. You seriously expect me to ride out west by myself chasing a rumor? Doesn't have to be yourself. I'm heading west too. Tag along with me and maybe we can find the, uh, the guy who put a stop with him. It's crazy. Impossible. Possible like raising the dead impossible? Alice crosses her arms and regards you thoughtfully. A spark slowly brightens in her eyes. All right, kid, what the hell? Let's give it a shot. Cool. Let me know when you're ready to leave. I'll wait here. All right. All right, so we found the shovel. Now we got to figure out what the hell we're going to do with this shovel. Because we got a bunch of little things we got to do in this game. Are you Susie Cochran? How'd you know my last name? Saw the graves in the cemetery. Sorry for your loss. Susie scowls bitterly and mutters into her whiskey. I saw it happen. Saw the whole damn thing. Couldn't do it. Nothing about it. The bartender says it was cows. Cows, right. I don't know what those things are, but they ain't cows. Not anymore. What happened? It was a raid. See, Ma and Pa used to cattle ranch back before, well, before they came home. Pa didn't make it, but Ma and I managed to rebuild. We ranched pigs instead. And she left me the place when she passed. Go on. Well, I guess a passing herd sniffed out that it used to be a cow ranch when they attacked. 
couple days ago. Happened so fast I didn't even have time to get my rifle out of the gun safe. Cow smashed in the front door and a fire started out back by the root cellar. House went up in blazes just like that. What'd you do? Well, there wasn't anything I could do. Couldn't get upstairs uh, to the kids cause the fire and I saw Tim trampled right in front of me. I just... She drains her glass. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Sorry. She refills her mug from a bottle on the bar and doesn't reply. What will we do now? Head west, suppose. Nothing keep me here. I have no desire to stay. Can't leave without my rifle, though. Why not? It was my rifles. Is all I got left of anybody. Where is it? Left to the ranch like a damn fool. Listen, can I ask you a favor? I need someone to go get it for me. Yeah, I'll go get it. Hell, let's go do it. The Cochran Ranch. So We're going to head to the Cochran Ranch real quick, guys. Let's go do it. Got a mosey on over. Cochran Ranch, established 1891. Oh, that's nice. That's pretty. What's in the tub? All the water in this trough is boiled away. Oh, Jesus. Susie's ranch is burned to the ground. That is, that's pretty devastating. Oh, no. Something's pretty, behind this door is making some pretty awful noise. I'm not going over there. The outhouse is the only thing still standing. Oh, I got it. Oh, no. Go through it. Oh, for the love of God. No, 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 no. Looks like somebody was in the middle of fixing a knife. Grab it. You got a varmint skin knife. Ooh. This knife optimized for separating varmints from their hides. Allows you to click skins from beast after combat. Very nice. I like that. Those pies were not safe. Oh, no. This thing looks angry. You're not going to make it to that safe without dealing with it. All right, we're going balls deep, folks. Okay, that's not that's not as bad as what I thought it'd be. I'm a fire! A pyro bove. Oh, my God. These things are just wicked. It's like fighting something made at a Pantera concert. You defeated that nasty Coskull floating in the cloud of flame. Ooh, mysticality. It's the Cochran's family gun save. Grab Susie's rifle. Ooh, it's Susie's rifle. Let's look at that real quick. Let's see how much damage this thing can do. It's an old rifle, but it's always been well cared for. There's six little notches carved into the stock. It's seen some hell, I'll tell you that much. Anything else? Ow, ow. Keep running into stuff. Well, I got Susie or uh, thing. Let's head on back. Let's just make sure that they're singing this. Just gonna drag myself back over to the bar. You find my rifle yet, stranger? Yep, here she is. Susie's eyes well up with tears. You hand her the rifle and she roughly scrubs her sleeve across her face before any of them spill over. Thanks, stranger. Didn't catch your name. I'm Haywood. Haywood, you blow me. <laughs> Thanks, Haywood. I can't rightly say what this means to me. She looks at the rifle for a long moment and looks back up to you. She sighs. Well, that's enough wallowing in my misery. Time for me to hit the road, and if you want to tag along when you head west, you just say the word. Sounds good, Susie. All right, so we've been making friends. Feel bad that I had to kill this guy down here. Didn't know, but it happens. They don't have enough meat left to bother with. Looks like they're playing for spiders now. Well, Jesus. The hell's going on here? Let's go back to the horse real quick. Can you sell me a horse? Sure thing, I should warn you. The horses get mighty attached to the riders. Once you bought one, you won't be able to change your mind later. Ooh, we got the spooky one, the crazy one, and the basic model. All right, I did some searching around. Couldn't find anything else. I think I might have to just buy a horse and blow it out of town. This might be one of those games where I have to do multiple playthroughs to get certain things. But that's all right. We'll be able to do that. 
So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate coming on out. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, give that like, subscribe, and notification button some hell, and I will see you all on the next battlefield. Deuces!